All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Life Talk. Um, today, um, I am I am so excited. I am introducing uh, a guest, an inspirer that I have been following since I was about 14, 15 years old, who I can say guided me throughout um, my life uh, with his videos, with um, his uh, talks and his philosophy. Um, I'm forever grateful for Elliot Hulse. I'm introducing him today on this podcast. Um, Elliot, I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for having me, Jesse. Thank you. Um, I, um, um, in my podcast, we talk a lot about love and marriage, and I do understand uh, the last time we met in Amsterdam, which was about two years ago, we spoke about the concept of marriage. And the other day, a few podcasts back, we had someone on the podcast who elaborated on the concept of marriage and was really adamant on it being a trap. I know you have a very different perspective, and I watch your uh, pictures and the love you have for your wife and, and uh, the years of marriage that you share um, with admir admiration. And I, I just want to give you the podium to dive right into that and um, share with you what, what your thoughts are on, on marriage. It's interesting that you say that, you know, that marriage is a trap. First thing that comes to mind is that living in the flesh is a trap being subject to to uh to our sins is a trap and so what marriage does is actually liberates you know as a man yourself included there's this uh there's this drive and there's this tendency to be swayed consistently by sex, right? They say sex sells. There's a reason why they say sex sells. Sex can get you to do all kinds of things, buy into all kinds of stuff, lead you down all kinds of paths that are actually slavery. Uh, a lot of men don't make conscious decisions with their head. They make unconscious decisions. They're unconscious about the decisions they're making because they're, they're making them based on the need, the want, and the lust for sex. And so among many of the ways marriage liberates is it liberates us from this constant seeking and searching and reaching and needing and subjugating ourselves to the women of the world. When a man has one woman, he can drop that. He can let go of that. No longer is he, uh, you know, on his path, doing his thing in life, and he stumbles upon or gets distracted by the next pretty face. When you've made a commitment that way, when you're in that covenant of marriage, you're free. You're free from that now. You can, you can exercise your lust, but in a way that is contained. And so to me, that's freedom. You know, I like to say to my students and to the men that I coach that uh, a way to reach that freedom, there's two ways to reach that freedom, is marriage or to be a monk. You know, there's a movement in the men's realm called MGTOW, Men Going Their Own Way, M-G-T-O-W. And, uh, and I can see it for good reason because marriage has, once the state became our God, and marriage no longer is a covenant between two people and the creator, but a contract between two people and the government. All kinds of perversions stepped into the realm of marriage. And so I can understand why someone would say that. Uh, the world has perverted marriage. So the other, the other option to that, and maybe this is what your, your guest was referring to, is to step out of it completely and not need. See, if you, if you eschew marriage, you, 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 get, you get rid of this idea that you're free by giving yourself over to someone, one person, um, you, you, you then, well, many men will end up finding themselves uh, 
a slave to chasing, a slave to the dating apps, a slave to every pretty, pretty face that walks by. So the only other way out of that, the only other way out of that trap is to, is to be a monk. And so men who say women are, or, or that uh, marriage is, is slavery, but then are having all kinds of promiscuous sex, constantly uh, forming themselves for attraction, everything that they do, everything that they wear, everything that they say, everything that they buy, the cars that they drive, uh, then, you're, then you're still a slave. So you either, you either get married or you drop the, you drop the, the sex altogether. Very interesting. Um, I uh, do see, and you see that too, that the divorce rate, and we probably both know a lot of people that um, do get divorced. And I know uh, a bunch of really successful men uh, that, that go through this process. Um, and if, if I look at just the statistics, right, and the divorce rate in the US and uh, the pain it causes to um divorce when you know what wh what is this uh, notion of making it official through a document a documentation which which creates this sense of commitment but why can't we create this sense of commitment by speaking by uh, vows right speaking it into existence why do we need to um notarize it because if it doesn't work out and this is this is just what happens right um, i don't have the statistics in front of me but the statistics of divorce are higher than um, than they are not um, so when we look at that isn't there a problem with our concept of marriage and i, I mean like concept of love as opposed to the uh, the concept of marriage itself um, because because you're talking about commitment and and I understand that um, the 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 commitment itself makes it harder to um, you know get out there have promiscuous sex and I, I totally understand it and want I want to get there with you um, but but do you understand what I'm saying with um, the commitment in in a way that it shouldn't have to be a piece of paper that creates all these headaches and and again um i do want to say that i'm all for when a divorce does happen a very unfortunate situation supporting the woman and if especially if there's a kid i i totally support that but what i also see is that there are cases and a, and a lot of them especially in the u.s where um the man has to give up half of his what he built of his of his you know finances his his, his estates everything and we can talk about like whether that's fair or not and his legal battle literally destroys um lives and stress and and everything that it causes when when you're just together when you are in a beautiful relationship where you water each other, right? As Osho says, uh, into something more beautiful, then you're free. You're, you're still together. There's still commitment, but there's no secondary attachment if it doesn't work out. Well, the problems that you're describing mm -hmm. come from our, our secularizing marriage. Mm -hmm. When we decided when we were convinced to kill God in the West, something had to take its place. And so God is replaced by the state. And so the, so the, the, the covenant of marriage is actually made between two people and God. That's really, that's really what marriage was intended since the beginning, how it was intended from the beginning. God gave Adam Eve, he married them in the garden. It was intended to be that way, male and female. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, since the, since communism, since Russia spread its errors and uh, we're living in a, basically a Marxist socialist world, uh, Antonio Gramsci, who's one of the creators of 
social Marxism, uh, understood that in order to essentially destroy the West, that was his intention, that was the intention, was to take down the West, you had to de-Christianize it. And so you had to do everything that you could to get God out of everything. Well, you know, that's the objective of communism is to, is to make the state the God. <laughs> that's, that's the point. You, you got to get rid of God so that it could be, God could be replaced by the state. That way men can have the power over men rather than God having the power over men. And so what that does is it no longer subjects the marriage commitment to two people and the creator. It turns them into robots and slaves for the state. And so... You know, you really can't even avoid it at this point because whether or not you decide to get the state involved in your marriage, say, you know, I'm not going to sign a marriage contract, um, the state, at least here in America, uh, imposes itself upon people's relationships. So <laughs> you, they have something called common law marriage, where just by mere virtue of living with a woman, you live with a woman, says you're married. And so whether or not you sign that marriage contract, if you decide to part ways with that woman that you simply were living with, right? You made no contract with the state, made no contract with love or uh, with God, you essentially uh, forgive or, or, or give over your power by simply being with her. So a woman can take you to court and, and wipe you out, even if you don't sign that contract. In fact, there was a, there was a, uh, a situation in Canada that recently showed up where a man was dating a woman, I think they were dating for something like nine years, but they never lived together. They never lived together. It was a long distance relationship, boyfriend and girlfriend. They were adults, man and woman, never lived together. They broke up and she was still, according to the state, entitled to half or you know, whatever she thought the alimony was due to her um, regardless. So, you know, we're living in this fallen world where whether or not you decide to make God a part of your life, you're going to get a God. <laughs> and as far as marriage is concerned, marriage has been perverted by the mnemonic forces of government. And so because Big Daddy government says that's what it's going to be. Interesting. It has been perverted. I, I hear what you say there. Um, so, so mainly what you describe that's it, it's it's not the, the the marriage that's wrong with today's society but today's society created and perverted the concept of marriage itself which which in a way helps um with with structuring not only the love and commitment but also livelihood so when god is a part of the marriage it goes beyond the flesh it is yeah. the union of two souls and when you have religion and when you believe in God, you have spirit, you have soul, you have something that's beyond the material. But in our world that has reduced everything to material, people who get together. Now, we had this whole gay marriage thing happen in, in America. You know, they wanted yeah. uh, gay people to be able to be married. Well, why was that? Why would, you want to be, why would you want to be married? Well, because there are state benefits, right? So I live with a, I'm a man and I'm living with another man. Well, you know, of course, I've kick God out of that equation altogether just by my choice, but I still want to get married, even though it was something that was, that's really, you know, uh, is a religious institution. Um, why? Because I get tax benefits. <laughs> I get, I get health benefits from my job. I can put this person down on pieces of paper uh, and, and receive all of the, you know, all the, all the goodies that big daddy government gives them. And so what we, by doing so, marriage, is, marriage is, is confined to our most base and primal nature. It, it's not spiritual at all. It's based on selfishness. It's based on greed, yeah. uh, possessiveness. It's based on power. And that's why the divorce rate uh, has... has been higher than ever yeah absolutely it's that's mm -hmm. because when there's a god says that when a woman and man come together they become one flesh mm -hmm. you become you literally become one flesh you become one thing it's a, saint paul says it's a mystery but you become one person with that with that with that soul you become yeah. one soul in a way um when we see it from that perspective we recognize just how 
binding that is. That is that is eternity. That's 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 soul stuff. That's spirit stuff. Mm-hmm. When we do it because of tax benefits, <laughs> right? When we do it because as the state says so, uh, then it's reduced to something that's like you can't cut the soul. You can't hurt the soul. You can't. In other words, the soul is not physical, mm-hmm. the, the, right? It does. It, you it, but. So it cannot be separated the same way a, a you know, physical thing can be separated. So we, we then become, in our age, really, the state is our, our God. And the reason why we've allowed the state to be our God is because we are our own gods. Everybody is a God upon, unto, unto themselves. Narcissism is the, is, the, is the dish of the day. Everybody believes that my truth matters, what I think matters, what I feel matters. Me, 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 me. Mm-hmm. So when we, when we come from that perspective, then they don't feel, you know, feel in love anymore. Uh, it's so easy for them to just pick up and pick up and leave. And the funny thing is that they, they go get remarried. <laughs> so it's, it's a fake marriage and they're jumping yeah. from fake marriage to fake marriage. The whole thing is, the whole thing is a, is a, it's just a show. It's a, it's a hoax. It's a hoax. It's fake. Yeah. So, so for these people um, to begin with, it, it'd be smarter to not just get married at all. Um, right? Because it's, it's a whole show. Look, if you, if you can control your passions, if you can be, if you can have self-control, if you can remain chaste, you can be a monk. You know, when I say that, it means in terms of uh, sexuality, mm-hmm. celibate. Then by all means, do that. In, in fact, St. Paul says that. He says it's better not even to look at a woman. He says to be as I am because he was a single man. He says it's better not even to look at a woman, but if you must, if you must because you cannot control your lust, then marry. Let's be honest here for a second, right? So we're both men. We both have testosterone. Uh, looking at it from a psychological perspective as well, in a digital era, we are flushed and, 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 and like every day with... Um, impulses of beautiful women on Instagram, on Facebook, on everywhere it's around us. So how do we, you know, not look? How do we not feel anything? It, I can't deny that it does something to me. And well, Jesse, I, you're a, you're a really good looking guy, yeah. so I'm sure it gets thrown at you a lot. Thank you, you thank you, Elliot. Really, I appreciate that. <laughs> you also have a really lean body, a good looking, strong, very low body fat. Uh, I'm sure you get tempted by ice cream and donuts and cookies. I'm sure there are all kinds of sweet things out there that you want, but when you've made a commitment to the health and to the strength and to the, and to a better body, you know how to deny yourself those things. And it's the same thing. Random sex promiscuity doesn't, it never leads to anything beneficial. Uh, it may be sweet for the moment. Mm -hmm. right? Just like that donut, it might feel good in the moment. But I see no difference between a obese glutton for food, and someone who is controlled by their sexual passion, the Mm -hmm. same way that you control your your, you you have self control for your fitness and for your, your looks and your health and your lean body is the same way that you exercise that control over the desire for ejaculation. I mean, that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. Interesting, yeah, um, but but again, our our psychology is um, if, yeah. if I when I was studying psychology, right? When I was studying psychology, I did some empirical research, and I saw that within marriage, after about five, six, seven years, we tend to look for other things. We tend to get curious. It's just a natural process. Uh, we start to wonder, and I'm sure that you had that too at some point. Maybe you didn't. I don't know. But a, a point where you're like, hey, what else is out there? Um, I know your story a little bit where you have been together, um, I believe, since high school, right? Um, mm-hmm. My situation is completely different. I'm now... 28 almost and i have been with a multiple amount of women 
that almost it feels like um you know it it what's what's the next best thing right i'm not saying this is this is good at all i'm just saying that this was my experience in my 20 20s where i wanted to experience multiple women so i know what i want to commit myself to what i like what i don't like and so i wanted to create perspective if that makes sense um, and with that perspective, I personally believe I can make the right decision to marry and to be committed to one woman and to not have that curiosity later on. I can understand why you say that, uh, especially in the, in the world where we're given this idea that, that love is, is emotional mm -hmm. and that love is sensual. And so what we do is we go thrill seeking. We go seeking the next good feel, good feelings, emotional feelings, sexual feelings. And we gauge our relationship based on feelings. How good does it feel to have sex with this woman? How good do I feel around her? And a lot of feeling I know for guys is pride. How proud am I to have this one with me? Or how proud am I to walk around with that one? What that does by putting all of our, our stock in emotions, feelings, and thrill seeking is that it bypasses the most important thing, which is rational love. Rational love is a, is, is a love for that person's character, a love for that person in the way that God loves them. It's loving that person even if your feelings change. Feelings are fickle. Feelings come and go. Thrills come and go. Thrills, uh, and if you've been with multiple women, you probably realize because if you've picked one and, and then if you hop from one to the other, it's because you got done with the thrill. I, I'm, I'm, I'm done with the thrill. I'm done with the thrill. I'm done with the thrill. Accurate. Why hang out? Why, you know, you, you've got, I thought of movies for a moment there. Uh, you know, the movies have just gotten so horrible. I don't watch movies at all anymore, but pe people go to the movies, you know, once a week or, or multiple times a week, or people get hooked on these Netflix shows. Um, because they're looking for the next dose of entertainment. And in order for that entertainment to continue to, to entertain them, it has, to be, it has to get more and more extravagant. You know, if you watch like, again, like I don't watch very many movies, but I've noticed, you know, every, every once in a while I'll go back to, to watch movies or I'll watch a movie or two. And I recognize that like these movies are so fake now because they're trying so hard to thrill people that mm -hmm. like, I can't even follow it because it, it's almost like, you know, a drug addict who, you know, it's good for him to have a little bit of drugs once a week, but then he needs more of it. And then he needs it every day. And then he, the next thing you know, he needs it all the time because he no longer gets that high. It's no longer entertaining. The same thing's going to happen when we treat sex and emotional love uh, with, with, that, with that gauge. It's like movie hoppers and thrill seekers um when you look when you choose not to be a monk when you choose to be with a woman when you choose to be with a woman you choose that woman because ultimately she's going to be a part of you she's going to be your partner see people take more time to choose their business partners than they do their life partners if you're going to choose a business partner, you're going to look at his back. You're going to look at his background, right? What kind of business did he have in the past? You want to know his, uh, his, his ability with money. You know, is, uh, is he financially stable? What his credit score is? I mean, you're going to look pretty deep. You're going to get, check references. You're going, to, you're, going to, you're going to study that guy's character because you don't want him all of a sudden to, like, flip out. So you're going to look for red flags. Mm -hmm. you're, you're going to look for all these things that point to stability, that point to... This person, and here's the thing, a big part of the problem with men is we don't know where we're going in life. We don't know what we're worth and we don't know what our mission is. So if you have a business, you know what your business is about. You know what you're going to be producing. I'm going to be producing these, these widgets. In order to produce and sell these widgets, I need someone that can do the things I can't do, that can complement me in my, in my building of this thing. The point of marriage is family. That is it. The point of sex is procreation. That is it. There's a flood of emotions and people like to 
like to reduce reduce sex to something that is feelings related and emotional related but really when it boils down to it ultimately boils down to it what are you actually forming the procreative act mm -hmm. and so to be in relation with a woman means that i am preparing or i'm uh vetting this woman you know we we hop right into bed these days because of contraception you know it's an abortion hey, you know you get pregnant kill the baby oh we don't want to get pregnant take these no. chemicals so you know we're chemically castrating ourselves or we're killing babies uh rather than doing it the right way and taking our time mm -hmm. take your time with someone and i say this to you as a man but i really also this this is even more so for a woman because she's the one that's more vulnerable in this situation women are the gateway to sex men are the gateway to relationships and part of the reason why relationships aren't working is because women have thrown their gates open and they can be invaded at any time by any man whenever mm -hmm. the whim arises and and what what about joy because i hear you talk about very black and white about procreation but what about the aspect of joy like joy is from sex is a very enjoyable experience isn't it no it's not okay. no it's a pleasurable experience pleasurable okay and you have to understand that there's a distinction between the two and that there's one higher than the other joy is spiritual joy comes from above mm -hmm. joy is a is a, is an ever present state you live in a state of joy you can never live in a state of pleasure sex you know if it lasts 20 minutes oh well that's that's what you're getting you had 20 minutes of pleasure after that anything else you feel is basically ego ah oh, it's hottie next to me or whatever it is so there is no there is no joy in sex there's no joy in in uh promiscuity there's pleasure and what we've done is we've conflated the two and so we live in a world that equates pleasure with joy so you get this car now you you know it's you have this sense of pleasure because you have a new toy you have um you have new leather seats to smell you have a you know a, a faster engine you know you have this this nice thing to play with it's it's very pleasurable but that but as you can you know as with anybody who uh has been able to afford expensive toys can tell you oh, that that's not that's fleeting after a while the car just becomes a car it's like oh wow because there's there was no real joy there there was just pleasure yeah. That that's the reason why why I sold all my cars and just <laughs> yeah. uh, invested it in other things. Um, yeah, no, that that's totally true. And and this is also has everything to do with the dopamine receptors in the brain. We need constant gratification, Insta, Instagram, Insta gratification. I even notice myself that sometimes am I looking for business or am I looking for just to waste time and to um, you know get a new shot of dopamine. Um, so it's it's good to be conscious of that, and the, the same goes with, you know, um, having sex with multiple people. I think, and I also speak from experience right now, whether it's from myself or other women, it desynthesizes you. When in the beginning you might say, yeah, you can have perspective, you know what you like, you know what you don't like, but at the end of the day you get so many um, impulses and you give so much away from yourself that it desynthesizes. The same goes for frequent masturbation, right? This is uh, the whole uh, no fat movement and uh, semen retention, which by the way, from my experience works for both women and men. If you refrain from anything sexually for a while, you become more receptive to it. Um, the only thing that I, that I did um, know from what you said is that and, and, and like after the 20 minutes of, of sex but and, and, and like a like it's done but i i have to disagree with that because for me sex is the look in each other's eye the the, the, the exchange of energy the the smell the pheromones the um, the way sex has so much more right and the, the whole yeah, tantra and, yes yeah you're describing sensuality Ask a person who's addicted to donuts and they will tell you the same thing. Mm -hmm. or, or women 
who love chocolate so much or, or wine. Think about women in chocolate with wine. Women don't, don't, women don't necessarily crave sex the same way we do all the time. It's slightly different. There's mm -hmm. some crossover, but ask, ask a middle-aged woman about how she feels about chocolate and wine. And she'll tell you the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. The look, just the look of that box and that little tingle you get in your body when you start to calm down. Dude, it's yeah. all, it's just chemical reactions. It's all sensual. Mm -hmm. It's not spiritual. And that's the thing, we've, we've reduced everything to the sensual, to the material. And that's why I started with the fact that we've removed God from every aspect of our lives. And that's why we have no joy because it's not spiritual. It's mm -hmm. all carnal. That makes total sense, yeah. Um, so basically what you're saying now is also the, the problem right now uh, where we are with marriage. It's, it's, it's the lack of spiritual, correct? We've completely detached right. ourselves from that. Yeah. Right. We have no virtue. We live in a yeah. virtueless society. We live in a virtual society where everything's basically fake, but we, have, we don't live based on virtue anymore. Nobody, we, don't, we don't strive to develop our characters School teaches us how to answer the right questions and brainwashes us into believing all kinds of degenerate ideas. There's nothing about character development. There's social justice character development, which you know, really actually hopes to reduce us and to turn us all into one gray, bland mass of controllable robots. But that's not, that's not true virtue. What, what is your uh, perspective uh, when, when you are married, or when you are together, about the role of the male and the female in a relationship, um, especially now when we're talking about equal equality and um, you know whether it's financially or the things you do in the house. What what is your perspective about that? What are the are there roles in 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 the in a marriage in a relationship, and how do you describe them? Well, all you have to do is look at the physiology of, of man and woman, and you can tell right away what ultimately the goals are. Just look at our physical bodies. Men are bigger. We're stronger. We're a bit more rugged. We're meant for work. Men are meant for work. Men are meant for protecting, mm -hmm. fighting. Women have a gift that only women have, a superpower that's far and beyond the physical strength of a man, and that is the ability to create life. A, a woman's body is designed in the same way that a man's body is designed to lift and to push and to pull and to, and to, and to, and to work. A woman's body is designed to care, bear and carry children. And so if you just consider what the body, I'm being purely physiological here. I'm just mm -hmm. looking at the bodies what one body is like and what the other body is like. You can, it, it, doesn't take a, it doesn't take a brain scientist or rocket scientist to figure out in a family where are the, their roles better played out. Yeah, uh, this is interesting that you say that um, and, and everybody that's listening right now and um, uh, you know, especially the feminists out there that follow me, um, you know, it, it's okay. Let us know what you think, share your responses. You know, we we'll, we'll might do a part two as well and elaborate a little bit more on that. But I, I have to say, uh, as far as the physical, I, I do agree with you. However, I, I think there are significant differences in male, male and female. And we're trying to reduce that so much that we can only speak of, oh, we're all equal now. And now we have another thing, which is non-binary. So we detach ourselves from any form of role. And um, that, that creates confusion, I believe. And I think it, it's, it's important to have a sense of uh, clarity and structure in your household. Um, what are your thoughts on that uh, with this whole non-binary and uh, women and uh, feminism and all that? Well, like I said earlier, you know, I mentioned the term Russia spreading its errors, and we know that Russia was overthrown by the Bolshevik Revolution in order mm -hmm. to instill communism. Communism is a system that's designed to, <laughs> it tricks people, but it's really designed to consolidate power into the hands of a very few while making as many slaves as possible. And so 
when we hold dear these newfangled values that we have in the West, we got to understand that communism has already been exported to the West in Marxism. Cultural Marxism is the, is, the, is the communist battle fought not with bullets and bombs, but fought with ideology. Mm-hmm. So you, you pervert the mindset of the people. You pervert everything that they hold dear. You destroy the culture with mm-hmm. the ultimate objective of creating the largest mass of tax slaves as you possibly can. So you do that by introducing perverted ideas through the media, through the school, through the music, mm-hmm. through the government, that ultimately in this term, you know, in, in, in terms of feminism, uh, which is, is a daughter of communism, to create more tax slaves. In communist Russia, the whole idea was to get women out into the workforce. So they were the first ones to start allowing abortion. Why? So that women can make more money for the state. Women think they're liberated when they work for a boss and pay money to the government, but, they, but they've been convinced that they're slaves when they work at home for their family and their husband. It's a trick. It's a complete trick because you're a slave either way, except you're not now a slave to, which you were never a slave. Women were never a slave. Men and women are equal. They're just not the same. They play different roles. It's just, mm-hmm. it's just nature. It's the way it is and everything. The, the, the sun and the moon, the night and the day, the up and the down, the in and the out, the fire and the water, it, everything is in its opposites while we live in this 3D. So men and women, it's only normal, it's only natural. Now, how do you, here's the thing, how do you create more tax slaves? Well, you convince women that they're, you convince them that they're slaves in their homes and they're liberated out in the, uh, in the corporate world. That's just one sliver of what has unfolded in terms of uh, uh, communism and femi- feminism. The roles have absolutely been perverted in both ways. Men are becoming very emasculated, both through you know, the chemical castration of men, through the plastics and uh, you know, the hormones in the water and the things that literally are, 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 are they, they're changing our physiology, both men and women. Um, I mean, I could go on and on, but ultimately the, the, the key is that you're, the, feminism does not liberate and enslaves, and enslaves women to a, 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 a degenerate ideology that only makes people miserable. Since feminism, there have been over 60 million abortions worldwide. More babies die in the womb uh, every year than all of the world wars combined. Do you know that? Every year, more than... And so we've got, uh, we've, got, we've got that to contend with. You, you mentioned, you know, something like 60% or 70, I think it was close to 70% divorce in America. Well, did you know that 90% of them, particularly in California, which is the, is the, the Lord of Babylon, uh, <laughs> 90%, 90% of divorces are initiated by women. I'm what, does that totally mean our, what does that mean for our children? Well, 90% of the men who are in prison come from single parent homes. I don't know the exact percentages. I don't have them on hand. Actually, I could pull them up. I had a presentation on this not so long ago. Drug addiction, depression, obesity, uh, all of this quote unquote school shootings that have been happening. You know, these were, you know, violent teenage boys pick up guns and go murdering people in their schools. Every single case was a result of a single parent home where mainly the mother has been raising the child without a father destroying the family is the the is the true stated objective of radical feminism and when i say radical feminism i mean everything after women's suffrage they use women's suffrage as a means to get women to vote against their husbands so that new political power could be, women could be manipulated in order to, you know, allow these atrocities. So it's been, a, it's, been a, it's been a trick that has destroyed men, it has destroyed women, it has destroyed families, it's destroying, it, it's doing what it intended to do. Cultural Marxism was intended, Antonio Gramsci and, 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 John, and Mark, what is it, Lucas, John Lucas, I think that was the name, the creators of cultural Marxism, 
uh, the, the, the stated goal was to take down the West. We're there. They're winning. I, um, I, I do have a question um, because uh, what, when, when I met you in Amsterdam, we, we talked about a lot of the literature from, uh, from Osho. I haven't heard you uh, talk about that a lot lately. Is there a specific reason for that? Have you detached yourself from a lot of his beliefs and um, his way of thinking because you got closer to God? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Osho made himself a God. Mm-hmm. And if you know anything, I, I found his ideas fascinating, mm-hmm. uh, liberating, and I, and I liked his meditations. But every single one of them stems from my ego's strong propendency towards chaos. And I think that it's, it's a, seed that, a seed that is buried within all of us, each fallen man. We have this, mm-hmm. this Freud called it the death wish. And that is, the, that, that is this strange, sinful sense that there'd be some pleasure in destroying things. <laughs> and Osho was, is, was a destroyer. He was a destroyer of ideologies. He was a destroyer uh, of sexuality. You know, he, he had a, he... There are a lot of things that I discovered that's in my search for why men are becoming weak. Mm-hmm. As I mentor to men, and I wanted to know this, I really wanted to know this. Why are men becoming weak? I discovered a myriad of uh, ideological subversions that have happened. Everything from the realm of God to the realm of money in, and how this ideological subversion unfolded. And, you know, Osho fits the bill for a subverter <laughs> in, in, in many ways. So mm-hmm. I, had to, I had to reevaluate. I had to consider, you know, my own uh, lusts, the things that uh, my ego it, it finds pleasure in, and I had to humble myself. And in that humility, I was able to see where I was wrong in my pursuit of, uh, of Osho and his ideas. I see now how pleasurable they are, but how destructive they are. Interesting. Yeah, I, I haven't discovered that myself. Um, he calls himself the destroyer. He, he, he likens himself onto uh, Shiva, and Shiva is a Hindu, quote-unquote, god. Well, his uh, whole essence I, I, in, in, in what he says and what he writes um, is, is to in, indeed disrupt, but also to make you think and to seek deeper to meaning as opposed to taking everything for right or wrong. Um, and that, that is what I always, uh, and we talked about this two years ago, actually. Um, and, and, and you now had a different discovery, which I think is, is fascinating because we evolve, we grow. I might think very different five years from now than I do now. Um, and, and that's what I admire about you greatly. You share uh, on your Instagram uh, at Elliot Holes, by the way, make sure you to follow him. Um, your entire journey, your changes, and you do not give a fuck what anyone says or things, or you just share. No, but like it's interesting because I've seen you from the start with Yo Elliot, with uh, you know the, the, the training in the gym to the, like the tires and how you built up strength camp to seeing you now uh, sharing almost almost a very more i would say mature message i think it's maturing and um a different message if you will than you did back then Uh, even us talking about osho very differently now than we did so i think i think that's fascinating i'm still on my own journey uh for for you know and and discovering that myself i think i should do that myself as well but um, in a lot of ways, Osho has been very liberating to me. And I think to you too back then, isn't it so? Oh, yeah. 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 I, but, you know, I no longer crave that liberation. Mm-hmm. That's a false liberation based mm-hmm. on, you even said it, you know, questioning, questioning. questioning. Mm-hmm. And Coach Osho says that we're born with a question in our heart. Um, in the garden, you would wonder why, why God would forbid. Why would God forbid Adam? 
from eating from this tree. Mm-hmm. It's called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. How, and you know, in our, in our, our, where we place the brain on the throne and everything, and we put, we make knowledge our God, you would wonder, you know, and I would wonder too, like, well, was God some kind of tyrant? He didn't want us to know stuff. Yeah. But it's in this, it's in this, there's this seed within us that wants to be God. And this is what the secular world has allowed us to do, want to be God, but we become God in our own minds. And the way we become God in our own minds is through the seeking of knowledge, 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 more knowledge, more information, more ideas. And I got to be honest, I was, a, I was a knowledge glutton. I wanted more ideas, more information, more stuff to think about, more ideas to, to wrestle with and to play with and to, and to move around with. And it led me, it led me to down the same path that promiscuity sends a lot of young men. I was a, I was a, I was a, I was a spiritual and, uh, and knowledge slut. <laughs> <laughs> right. Love that. Yeah. All right. And I discovered the futility in that. And not only the futility, well, futility is a great word. I discovered the futility in that. I discovered the death in that. And so in many ways, I've gotten dumber as I've gotten older. I, I want to be simple. I've simplified things. I've learned not to trust in my own knowledge and information any longer, but to allow faith to carry my day. And that requires a kind of courage that we're never given. We're taught not to be courageous in our, in our schools. We're taught to be dependent on what information and knowledge. So we lack that virtue of courage. Courage and faith, faith is a supernatural virtue. You can't just, you can't, you can't teach faith. You can't learn faith. You can't get it by reading about it. You can't get it because you rationalize. Well, you can. St. Thomas Aquinas does a pretty good job of it. Um, it's, it's a courage. It's a trusting. It's a letting go. And it's a simplicity that, you allow, that ultimately, if you've allowed yourself to become as complex as I have, you you just fall into, and that's where I that's where I find myself now. I'm actually just simpler. Mm-hmm. Now, do you find uh, this is my last question? Do you find that you being more simpler in a more complicated culture, in a more um, diverted culture, and that that's that's changing so rapidly, agreeably in the wrong way? Do you find it hard to? Um, put yourself um, as someone with courage um, in, in, in a different direction, um, which you do on your social, uh, which affects your following, affects your business uh, most likely. Um, do, do you find that difficult? I don't, I don't think about it. I don't think about it. You know, uh, I've lost business partners because I'm bad for business. <laughs> That's my point. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but it doesn't, it's not first for me. That's not, for, pleasing others is not first for me. Getting more followers is not first for me. Uh, I don't need people to like me, love me, and pay me. I, I don't get what I need from other people. Other people can't fulfill. People can't fulfill. People can't truly fulfill me. You will always end up short. There's only one person, there's only one person that I even give some of my faith to that could fulfill, and that's my wife. Not even my children can fulfill me. My wife can't fulfill me, but she's as close to another human being be able to fulfill me uh, that, that, that there is because we have an agreement. Um, so I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> I don't, I, it doesn't, I, yeah, I just don't care. 
I, I um, the reason why I'm saying this is because I, I do see, you know, the whole um, business partner that you that you lost, the, the the conflicting nature of social media with your persona. People saying, "Hey, we missed it. The old Yo Elliot, we miss him." Um, and what I what I greatly admire, and I'm I'm um, I'm very very much, and this is why I connected with you even two years ago, and even in the beginning when I was 14 years old. Can you believe it? Um, the ability to just be yourself when the whole world points out a different direction to be the voice of the unheard and to be um, disruptive in a little sense right now we are uh, because we're losing culture we're losing christianity we're losing a lot of our core spiritual values and to see that sink more and more and more and um, even with me because um, i'm partially an influencer um, i'm partially um, expected to behave a certain way it's um it, it is quite difficult but it takes courage that you just explained to stand tall and to um, be that voice that you know you you truly believe in and you stand with hey, yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean i'm just gonna look if i get on social media it's only because i kind of have to you know, I, that's, it help, I, pay, I pay the bills that way. Yeah. You know, I make offers that way. I have ads. But <laughs> I'm never going to tailor myself to what's more ple most, most pleasing to people. I'm going to be who I am. And if you're yeah. interested, hey, I got something that you might like. Yeah. And if you're not interested, that's okay. You can go away. And, and tomorrow, you might be interested today and then tomorrow you're not interested. Or you might be not interested today and then tomorrow you'll be interested. But I'm just going to keep on going. I'm just going to keep... I have no other choice. I can't do it any other way. I can't, I've tried and it doesn't work for me. I just have to be true. I have to be honest. I have to be myself. I love that. I want to thank you so much for your, uh, for your time and elaborating on this, um, this topic, culture, marriage, uh, love, um, describing uh, a little bit of, uh, uh, the archetypes, king, warrior, magician, lover, uh, between the lines. Um, and I hope to, uh, I really hope to see you again at some point and to uh, to connect smoke. I don't know if you still smoke that good cigars. Uh, I don't know if you changed that too. Oh yeah, I like cigars. Yeah, good. All right, you still do. Um, with a good whiskey. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, I'm just figuring out like... Um, if, if you still do that, because um, obviously um, um, it, it might not be uh, something that's inclusive to your uh, current, um, current life. I never liked whiskey. <laughs> that's fair. fair enough. Okay. All right. Well, um, again, um, thank you, Elliot. Make sure to everybody that's listening uh, to give him a follow. Um, he also has a book uh, called King. Uh, highly recommend it. Um, and, um, we hope to, uh, sp I hope to speak soon. Thank you so much. You got it, Jesse. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you.